Hi again everyone. This week we're going to expand on complex geoforms and we're going to increase the level of difficulty by including curvilinear forms such as cylinders, cones and radius edges. So we're going to apply what we've learnt about constructing cylinders, cones and ellipses in perspective in order to have these features appear correct in our sketches. Starting with one point perspective here I've drawn, of course, an object with one face that's square to us. We've covered this in previous videos. And I have a vertical cylinder sitting on the horizontal surface. As we know, vertical cylinders have an ellipse at the top and bottom. Those ellipses are circles in perspective and circles sit perfectly inside squares. So it's important to proportion those squares first, make sure they are squares, and then we can apply our geometry to find the center line and on that center line will be the minor axis of the ellipse. 90 degrees to that would be the major axis of the ellipse. You can see here that the squares will determine how open or closed each of these ellipses would be on the minor axis and of course our understanding is that an ellipse that's closer to our eye level which is the horizon line will appear flatter and it would open up the further it is below our eye level. Here we have another one point perspective construction and in this sketch we've got a horizontal cylindrical feature. Here you can see that the front and rear faces of this cylinder are actually circles and that's because this surface is actually the face that is square to our view. To make sure that the end face is dead center on this vertical wall, you cross your diagonals, of course, to find the center. Draw a line vertically down through that midpoint, and then you can proportion a square centered off that center line. Of course, it's got the convergence going to the vanishing point to make sure that the perspective is correct. In this sketch, I wanted to show you that you can create radius edges um, from our understanding of ellipse constructions. And we can also create uh, negative features still by using the same construction. A radius edge, of course, is an edge that is no longer a sharp edge, but actually has a roll, a curve on that edge. And you can see here that I've mapped out three ellipses and you can see how the closer this face is to the vanishing point, the flatter that ellipse appears. The further away, of course, the minor axis of that ellipse starts to open up. And because it's one point perspective, our ellipses are straight up and down. Okay, so the major axis is vertical. This radius feature is actually drawn on a face that is square to us. That face is a square. I've mapped in a circle. And I'm only taking one quarter, the top right hand corner of that circle to create this radius edge. I've also mapped the square on the far side face just in case I see any of that radius on the far side corner. That'll vary depending on where you've drawn your view in terms of position on the horizon line, whether it's further above or below the horizon line, will expose a lot more of that surface. Zooming in a little, you can see that the original leading edge of this box, I'm actually using the same construction, identifying a corner to which I can just trace off a section of that ellipse. This one here is actually the same construction. It's not actually a physical feature, but I'm drawing that in as the center line or contour line to help communicate that there's a radius that goes from the left side all the way across and to the right side. And with the sketching that you've been doing in studio, where you're using center lines and contour lines to help communicate the terrain of a surface, that's why I've actually drawn that there. 
but it is accurate because it's fully constructed. The hole through this wall is actually just a horizontal cylinder, but it's very, very short. Same thing as before, I've mapped out a square, that's square to our view. I've drawn a circle that tangents that square. I've also mapped the square at the back of the face of this wall and drawn another circle. For it to appear as a whole, the far side circle, I'm only tracing off and defining that part of the curve. But the construction, if we just have a look at this area here, is just a short little barrel cylinder lying on its side and I'm using the same construction principles as previously. Okay, so let's have a look at drawing these curvilinear features in two-point perspective. In this sketch, I've just got a vertical cylinder and a vertical cone and also a radius edge. From previous videos and our understanding of drawing vertical cylinders and cones, and horizontal cylinders and cones in two-point perspective. You can see here I'm using the same construction principles to make those features appear correct in this perspective. As always, when mapping ellipses, it's important to proportion the square in perspective correctly, crossing the diagonals to find center, and dividing to find the tangent points of your ellipses. Here we've got a radius edge feature similar to the last example that I showed you in one point perspective. I'm really just constructing a cylinder lying on its side in two point perspective, finding the quarter that I need of the ellipse at the front and the back, and then tracing off that section of the ellipse to create this radius edge. Here you can see I've got a radius feature on the left hand side of this block. And I'm actually not drawing the whole ellipse, but I am constructing the front edge and the back edge so that there's a level of accuracy in the construction. You can do this once you get familiar with the actual overall construction, and it's just practice. So the next stage from drawing through and constructing everything is estimating things, but still applying constructional theories for that feature to look accurate. Here I've got a conical form lying on its side where its base sits on this surface. You can see I've mapped the square in perspective, I've found the center line which is the minor axis of my ellipse. The square determines how open that ellipse is and on that center line lives the point of that cone. I've also got a radius feature here. I'm using a shortcut by not drawing the whole ellipse but I am mapping on the front and back face the square feature so that I can mimic the same curve and these lines will actually determine the accuracy of that perspective convergence. So as we move forward you can see the importance of practicing the one and two point perspective fundamentals in drawing cylinders, cones, boxes and ellipses. And even though we're constructing abstract objects here, it's the same construction principles that are going to help us draw consumer products and environments with some accuracy.